Freedom Life Church, Pastor Randy here. So excited to have each and every one of you join us here today. I'm going to go over a few things about our FLC online campus and website. First and foremost, we have a chat that we would love each and every one of you to jump in. Share a couple of things, where you're watching from and how many people you're watching with. Our hosts love to hear that and read that and be able to get some dialogue going on with you. A couple other things, if you're used to giving financially in person, physically at the campus, you can do that online as well. Up top, there is a give tab. You simply click that. You can give one time or you can give reoccurring. You could join life groups. We have online life groups where we meet through Facebook. Uh, we meet virtually through Zoom. That's ongoing. That's always happening throughout the week. Uh, also, we have something exciting. We have a Kids Connect. Click the Kids Connect tab. There's some resources there. And we're so excited to be able to have the family join us online as well. So get familiar with it. Like I said, jump in the chat, ask one of our hosts any questions that you may have. We will love to be able to love on you and just enjoy the service with you. All right, so let's just dive on into our service right now and see what God's gonna have in store today. All right. Good morning, Freedom Life Church. Can everybody feel that the Spirit is here this morning? I know there's, there's a few of us here, but God is moving. He did it through rehearsal, through pre-service prayer time, and something that we're expecting today. Welcome to you guys online. Welcome, Freedom Life San Antonio. We're so excited to be with you guys this morning. My name is Trevor. I'm the apprenticing student pastor here, and I have a couple of things I want to share with you real quick before we get service started. So the first thing is, in the seat pew in front of you, you'll find two things. The first thing is the Connect card. So if you want to get more information about our ministries, if you want to have any prayer requests, if you're a first-time guest, please fill out that Connect card. We want to make sure that we connect with you this week. And if you're a first-time guest, we actually have a gift for you out back after service. So please be sure to fill out that Connect card and drop it in the offering box out back. The second thing is the offering envelope. So if you'd like to give through tithes and offerings, please fill out that envelope, and you can actually just drop that in the offering box out back as well. So a couple of announcements real quick. The first thing is Convoy of Hope, One Day to Feed the World. Something that we're really excited about. We've been casting vision to this thing, and we're so excited to see you guys already starting to participate, already starting to, to do this thing. And so the opportunity here is that we get a chance to feed kids to all around the world who are hungry, who need food, who, who don't know where their next meal is coming from. We get a chance to help out with Convoy of Hope and do that. And it's something that we're really, really passionate about. Um, so $10 feeds a kid for a month. And, and the challenge that we're offering is this one day to feed the world that you give one day's wages to Convoy of Hope. So figure out, calculate it out, whatever you make in a day to give that to Convoy of Hope um, as an opportunity to really bless the world with the light that Christ has put inside of us, right? So that's something that we're really, really passionate about. Please be sure to sign up. We have information cards out in the back foyer. Please ask any questions that you have. We want to make sure that you understand clearly what it is. All this money goes to Convoy of Hope. We don't keep anything for ourselves. So please ask any questions that you have. The second thing is Freedom 101. If you are new to Freedom Life Church or you've never been to a Freedom 101, please sign up to come to Freedom 101 on December 20th. It's an opportunity to learn more about Freedom Life Church, more about what we do, why we do it, and who does it. So please sign up for that if you've never been there before. The last thing is Christmas Eve service. We're really excited about this. We are doing an online, all day, 24 hours, service. Every hour on the hour, we'll be sharing a Christmas devotional um, from Christmas Eve at noon through Christmas Day until midnight. 
So any chance, any time you get to watch it during that day, sit down with your family and watch it, whatever it is, it is a family-style service. So we're inviting our kids in to do it. It's a really incredible experience, so we invite you guys to tune into that and invite your family to watch with you. All right? So with that, it is now time for our family time. We're really excited about this. You guys, you guys peep the, the decorations. So let's turn our ears on, right, Miss Hannah? Yes. Thank you, Trevor. Let's click our ears on. Let's go ahead and do that. And if you're watching online, you can do that too. I know we can't see you, but we want to make sure that you're paying attention. And we want to also welcome you if you're watching from San Antonio. We're so excited to have you guys. So today, you see, you guys see the flowers. Aren't they so beautiful? Yes. Can we try it again? Aren't the flowers so beautiful? Yes. So today's title for our kids lesson well, not necessarily kids, because we know that this is family time, which is directed to the kids, but we know that us adults can actually learn from this too, right? Okay, I'm going to ask you all to participate. It's so awesome when we participate, because then we can actually retain the information, and then we can learn. Okay, so our title today is Mercy Flowers. Can you guys say that? Y'all sound so beautiful. I love it. So today's scripture comes from Psalm 52, 8, and it says this, But I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the mercy of God forever. And in this particular scripture, with God by his side, David, kids, can you say David? David, yeah, I love the big kids that, that piped up. Thank you. <laughs> David compared himself to like an olive tree flourishing in the house of God. Not only is an olive tree one of the longest living trees, but a flourishing tree that has greater longevity. Kids, that just means a long life. That's a big fancy word for long life. But God's mercy, and that's what Pastor James is going to be talking about today. God's mercy can be described in many, many different ways. For example, his mercy is tender. Can you say tender? Tender. tender. Yes, Jeremiah. Thank you. His mercy is great. Can you say great? great? Great. His mercy never fails. And more importantly, his mercy is undeserving by sinners. Who are sinners? Yes, us, me and you and my sister and my grandma and my great-great-grandpa. So today, we're going to learn about these flowers. Is that what I'm holding? I'm holding some pretty flowers, huh? Yeah, there's different colors. There's a yellow, there's red, there's purple, and there's orange. So remember, we started the script with the scripture is Psalm 52, 8. When I was reading about this, I read that a great godly man named John Bunyan once wrote, all the flowers in God's garden are doable. Can I get you guys to imagine a field that is covered with flowers like this? Like, so far that you can't even see. The only thing that you can see is flowers. Isn't that pretty? Isn't that amazing? So picture this. That's how God's mercy is. It's abundant. It's never ending. So I'm going to tell you guys what these mean. So what color is this one? What did we say? Yellow. Yellow. So this one can represent tender mercy because God cares for us. His care is always, always, always loving and tender. And what about this one? This color, it's under my computer, sorry. Yes, Jeremiah, man, you, you get the gold star for today. This one is red. This is God's great mercy. You can't measure God's mercy, and it goes on forever and ever. Thank you so much, Miss Julieta. You are such a servant. And the next one, what color is this? I bet Jeremiah can answer what color. It's purple. Yes, it's purple. That's undeserving. Did you know that God's mercy is undeserving? But he took the punishment for you. He took the punishment for me so we can get his mercy every single day because it's new every morning. The last one, what color is this? Orange. And if you're watching online, it might be a little hard. But, yeah, Jessica, I hear you. Yep. Or Christian, if you're watching from San Antonio, this is orange. And the orange is God's unfailing mercy. His mercy, it will never leave you. Just like his love and his grace. The Bible tells us, like I said, his mercy is new every single morning. Because we're going to mess up every day, right? Sometimes we're not deserving of his love. But he took that punishment for me and he took it for you. And his mercy, 
It's never failing. So there's a lot of pretty flowers here, huh? But you think all these are pretty? They're abundant. They're a lot. God's mercy, his love, his grace, his patience never runs out. It's more than enough. And you are more than enough to receive that today. So can I invite you guys to stand up really quick? Let mercy be your friend today. It will help you, and it will give you great, great joy in your life. So we're going to get ready for service because Pastor James has an amazing word from the Lord today. But we have to be ready to receive that. Kids, make sure you don't check out too because I think there's going to be little nuggets that you guys can learn and you can teach your parents. Because we know that you guys are paying attention. We know that you're taking notes. And we know that you are making a huge difference. So to get our hearts prepared and our minds prepared, let's do it again. Let's click our ears on. All of us, let's all click our ears on because we're ready to hear from the Lord. We're ready to hear a word that's going to be transformational. It's not going to be a moment, but it's going to be momentum to take us into what the Lord has for us. So let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for this time. Thank you so much for reminding us that your mercy is never failing. That you love us enough that you sent your son to die for us, to take on all of our punishment. And that even though we mess up every single day, that your mercies are new every single morning. Father, speak to us today. We stand with expectation. We love you. We're grateful for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Freedom family, whether you're in the room or you're watching online this morning, can you just begin to lift your hands just in acknowledgement of the presence of the Lord? Jesus, we love you. You are the living word. You are the bread of life. Jesus, we honor you this morning. We love and adore your name, for there is nothing like it. We acknowledge this morning that there is nothing like your name, that there is nothing greater, nothing higher, nothing with more authority, and nothing sweeter all at the same time. We thank you for your name, Jesus. We thank you for who you are, Lord. We give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise. For you alone are worthy of it. You alone are deserving of our adoration, of our affection, of our worship this morning. Can you begin to open your mouth and tell Jesus what you think of him? Lord, we love you. Lord, we honor you. Lord, there's nothing greater. There's nothing better. There's nothing sweeter.
to you, Jesus. We give it to you, Jesus. Oh, authority, all power, it belongs to you. It belongs to you. Cause death could not hold you. The veil tore before you. You silenced the boast of sin and grief. And the heavens are your glory for you are raised to life again you have no you have no rival you have no evil and now and forever God you yours is the key yours is the key yours is the glory yours is the
need to rescue my sin was heavy but chains break at the weight of your glory i need a shelter i was a orphan but you called me a citizen of heaven when i was wrong you were my, you were my healing. Healing.
never ending. And it also means that while you're going through it, he's with you. He's faithful. He's faithful. Receive that. Receive that. Let's pray together. Father, we stand in a posture of receiving your love. God, this isn't about emotional hype. This isn't about our denomination. Pentecostal, reform, charismatic, this, that. Lord, this is just about lifting up the name of Jesus. You are the only one in the universe qualified of dealing with our stuff. You're the only one in the universe, Lord, qualified of healing the brokenness that we're walking through. You're the only one in the universe to rearrange our hearts, to heal our past, to give us a future, to give us hope. You're the only one in the universe that can work things out. We trust you in that right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Welcome. Welcome, 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 welcome. Man, you go ahead and take your seat if you can. I'm, um, I'm excited. I don't know if it's the energy drink or, uh, if, if, <laughs> I don't think it's the energy drink. I, I know that it's the spirit of the Lord because there is something so sweet about what God is doing for us. I just want to kind of throw you off. I know you guys were dancing. Let me just kind of get you uh, in, in lock with what we're doing. Just do this. I didn't do this last night. Go ahead and take your arms like this. Again, we're already socially distancing, so put your arms out like this if you can. What I want you to do is I want you now to put your arms out, and then I want you to clasp them together like this. Go ahead. All right, so now look down at your thumb. Which thumb is on top? Who got right? Who's got left? All right, I want you to do it again. Go ahead and take your arms like this and clasp them like that. Which, uh, which thumb is on top? Is it the same one? Exactly. So, so the, the reality is what we're, what we're showing here is that we Christians... We actually like the way we do things. We like our preferences. We, we, we like our, all of our plans. We like to do things the way we like to do them. And what I want to invite you into today is that God is saying, I'm not interested in any of that. I'm interested in my purposes. I'm interested in your purpose if it aligns with my purpose. And so as we dive into this text, I want you to understand that God is telling a story here. Matthew uh, 5, verse 7. We'll throw it on screen so you'll know where we are. But we're in this series called Blessed in the Mess. And I want to catch us up to where we are so you'll know where we're going. But here we are. It's the Beatitudes. In Matthew 5, 7. It's the book in the Bible. If you've got it, it's the first book in the New Testament. If you're reading a paper Bible. And it says, blessed are the merciful. For they will be shown mercy. I want to catch you guys up just a little bit because God has some intended purposes with this text. What Jesus is doing here is this is not just a one-off statement, but this is a, a part of a sermon. It's a sermon on the mount, Matthew 5 to Matthew 7. And what he's doing here is he's building things on top of each other. And so if you don't understand how they've been building, you'll miss the whole point. So if you were here, week one, Jesus talked about, and we, you can read it here in Matthew, it says, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. It's almost like God is doing something here as we dive into this that says, blessed are the merciful. I want you to understand that this is not a one-off statement. This is not something that you can just pick and choose. And what that shows us about the character of God is that he is a comprehensive God. I need you to understand that, that in other words, God doesn't do shabby work. That he's already won and he's finishing you up. You're here on earth and he's working some things out in your life. So what that means is that he knows when your son will come back home. He knows when your mom will put down that thing. He knows when your dad will come to faith. He knows when your daughter will get her life together. He knows when you'll get your life together. God is a comprehensive God. He sees the beginning from the end. I want you to understand that. But see, here is the challenge with this statement. Here's the challenge with this text, that most of our faith, even though God is a comprehensive God, most of our faith is filled with tension. Did you know that? 
Like, I want you to look at this, Hebrews 11, verse 1. It says, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. In other words, tension. Have you guys been feeling some of that tension? God, I know that you are working some things out. We just sung about it. You're working things out for my good. But right now where I'm at, like, you don't seem to be working the things out the way I need you to be working them out. These people that Jesus is talking to, the people that he's talking to, they're filled with tension. And some of them are sitting on this hill as Jesus is giving this sermon, and they're wondering, Jesus, I'm ready for you to work this tension out already. I'm ready for you to work the thing out. Jesus, you're the Messiah. Jesus, you're the king. Jesus, you are the Lord. You are the one who can resolve the tension. So uh, can we be done yet? That's what my daughters say. When they're tired of stuff, can we be done yet? Can, can we be done with this hurt? Jesus, can we be done with this baggage? Can I be done with all of the relationship issues I got? Can I be done with waiting? Can we be done with feeling what we're feeling? And it seems like as we approach this text that Jesus almost ignores the question so that he invites us into something more. Here's why I want you to understand. Last week we were talking about filling that happens when we uh, hunger and thirst for righteousness. And Jesus is making an intentional shift right now from right standing. We we like that, right standing with God. I'm, I'm free. I'm healed. I'm right with God. But now he's making an intentional approach to talk about right living. Right living. That means that it's not just about doing uh, the, the, the things right. Not just about doing right stuff, but it's about doing the right things. I want you to get this right, he says. What Jesus is inviting us into, y'all, is not just about good feelings in this text. And so I, it's going to feel a little challenging at times today. It's going to feel like, oh, wait a minute, where are we going here? But Jesus is inviting us into something that's supernatural that we can only do with his help. Many of us are asking, can we be done yet? And Jesus is pulling us back to say, wait, wait just a minute. Will you trust me in this? Will you trust me in this? You're going through that relational issue. Will you trust me in this? See, what Jesus is trying to help us understand, and I want you to feel this intentional shift over the next couple of weeks that we've talked about being blessed in the mess, but now we've got to switch gears to talking about our blessed in the mess. It's not just about us, but it's about blessing others in their mess. Uh Uh-oh. We don't really like that because we're in the middle of tension. A lot of us are asking, can we be done yet? But Jesus is asking us to ask another question. How is Jesus inviting me to respond to others? How is he inviting me to respond to others? And not just the proverbial others, not just the invisible they, but how is he inviting me to respond to the person I don't like? How is he asking me to respond to the haters? We all got them, right? How is he asking me to respond to the person that hurt me? How is he asking me to respond to the person that hurt my family member? How is he asking me to respond? How is Jesus asking me to bless others in their mess? I'm not saying it's going to be easy, y'all. I don't even have this figured out. But this is what Jesus is calling us to. And so we get this text that says, blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. I, I want to give us just a, a baseline of it. We were sitting as a staff trying to figure out all of the implications of this text and all of the, the stuff. And I can tell, all the staff in here can tell you that we had a board full of stuff as we were preparing the sermon. And I still left like, what am I going to preach? Because it's so much information. So let me try to give it some, some simple stuff. Anything that I say that might be significant, you can just uh, attribute it to the staff because they're, they're awesome. But this, I'm going to try to do my best to, to give whatever I got. Here it is. Mercy is not giving someone what they deserve. That's the definition. Mercy is compassion. So to be merciful is compassion and action. You follow me? To be merciful, I love this definition, to be merciful is to treat someone better than they deserve from you. To treat someone better than they deserve from you. See, the reason why we were struggling so much in sermon prep, and it wasn't really a struggle, but what it was causing us to do, it started to arise a lot of tension with us. We had a lot of tension as we were reading this. 
And so I just got one point today. I know usually I have like a a three-point sermon and it rhymes and there's alliteration and there's all this other stuff. All I got for you today is this. Mercy is not a system, but it's a person. Mercy is not a system, it's a person. And see, what you've got to understand is that anytime we add people into the mix of anything, it complicates things. Tension. And the problem with the complication, the problem with the tension is that we don't like it. Right? Scholars have been debating about what this text means. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. They're asking, well, do I have mercy if I give it? Do I give it because I have it? Do I not have it if I don't give it? And there's all of these debates about what mercy means. But I want you to kind of lean into this tension for a little bit. Even if we understood all of the theological implications of this text, would we do it? Like, like that's, that's the tension of mercy. It's, it's complicated because it seems so simple. We've got great definitions for it, but it doesn't seem easy to do. I want you to imagine who Jesus is talking to for a minute. Imagine yourself on the hill when Jesus is giving this sermon. And you're loving, you're loving as Jesus is talking because you hear certain parts and you're like, yeah, that's my God. Like, that's the Jesus I serve. You, you get really excited because he says, hey, blessed are the poor in spirit. Okay, Jesus, you, you, you feeling me now, Jesus, because you know I ain't got no money in the bank. I, I'm poor for sure. <laughs> blessed are those who mourn. Oh, yeah, that's me, Jesus. Yep, because I've been crying about a lot lately. I, I got a lot to mourn in 2020. Yes, that's me. Blessed are the meek. I got, all right, you're starting to lose me a little bit, Jesus. Uh, okay, I'll try it, though. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst. Oh, yep, that's me, Jesus, because I've got, I'm thirsty about some things. You know that. And then he goes on and he says, blessed are the merciful. And as he says, blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy, you start to get this tension in your spirit. Because as you're listening to Jesus give this amazing sermon, you're a poor person in this community who's worked their entire life to try to make a living for themselves. And then you look over and there's a tax collector. The tax collector who makes a living off of taking money from you. They take money from you, give it to the Roman government, and then skim some off the top for themselves. Can you feel some of the tension? Hold up, Jesus. You're supposed to be the Messiah. You're supposed to be the king. You're supposed to be the guy that resolves the tension. Can we be done with this yet? Can you give him what he deserves? He doesn't deserve to be in the same vicinity. He doesn't deserve to sit on the same pew I'm sitting on. He doesn't deserve this. See, Jesus, this isn't fair. Why don't you give them what they deserve so that we can resolve the tension? And here's what happens, y'all. We don't like tension. It's complicated. And because we don't like tension, what we try to do is we create systems in our lives to resolve the tension. We don't like complicated. It's just human nature. Here's how I know. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to be real vulnerable with you. Y'all not going to say it because y'all quiet today, but y'all not going to say it, but I'm going to say it for you. Admit this. You don't like feeling guilty about that family member. You don't like feeling guilty from that family member that always calls you. And so you have this system to resolve the tension when they call. It's called caller ID and voicemail. Decline. You don't like the tension. And so we create systems. And just like you, I have a system too. Everybody's got systems. I've got a system of deciding who I give my mercy to. I just want to invite you into my life for a second. Here's, here's my system. Here's my system. And y'all gonna think I'm horrible for this, but I'm just saying what you want to say. Okay, here it is. Here's my formula. Inconvenience over time plus frustration plus certain people plus, I mean, times my issues squared equals my level of mercy. Anybody feeling that for a second? (laughs) Inconvenience. You are inconveniencing my life. You're inconveniencing my family. I I just don't have the energy. You're inconveniencing me, and so I don't have mercy for you. Time. Listen, I don't have time to hear your issues anymore. How many times we done met about this? You want to talk about this again? I just don't have the time. I, my, you're reducing my level of mercy right now. Frustration. 
You frustrated my life. You frustrate my family, and you frustrate me. If you wouldn't have done what you did, if you wouldn't have said what you said, if you would have treated me better, if you would have loved me more, if you would have done what I needed, I would be so much better. But you frustrate me, and so I can't show you mercy. And then, let's be honest, there's just certain people. I don't know if it's the way they walk. I don't know if it's because of their hair or lack of hair. I don't know, I don't know what it is, but there are some people that we just don't like. Let's be honest. Y'all can be holy all you want to, but there's some people that you're like, yeah, I, I can't deal with her. See, see, there's some people we don't like, and I, hear, I want you to hear this, that sometimes we have a hard time dealing with certain people because they represent things we haven't dealt with. That's what happens. See, my issues, we don't like to talk about it, but I've got issues, and my issues usually take over all of my relationships. Some of us struggle not because of the person, but because of who they represent, You've been struggling with employment for the last couple of years, and the reason is because every time you get to that six-month uh, evaluation or that yearly evaluation, you look at your boss, and they give you a slight bit of feedback, and now you're ready to run because it's reminding you of your low self-esteem. It's reminding you of how your daddy treated you. It's reminding you of what your mama said to you. Church, can I tell you that you changing churches every couple of years may not be because of the pastor. It may be because of who they represent, right? So, and let me give you some hope. Bosses, pastors, teachers, small group leaders, parents, friends, I need you to hear this. This right here from the heart. Don't let their issues stop you from serving them the way God has called you to. That's important for us to realize. See, but we have a system, y'all. We have systems. Everybody here has a system. The problem with the system is that it's broken. I don't know if you noticed that, but it's broken, And see, here Jesus was in this spot. So in order for a system to work, it has to make sense. And the only way to resolve the tension is for the system to make sense. The Romans had a system that they would deal with people. The Jews had a system that they would use to deal with people. And now they're standing and listening to this man named Jesus, and none of it makes sense. Because they're waiting for Jesus to resolve the tension so that it can make sense for them. Jesus, would you just give them what they deserve? Let them feel what I've been feeling. Break them the way I've been feeling broken, Jesus. And many of us are in 2020 trying to resolve tension with a broken system. I don't like the conflict we're in with this person, so I'm, and the way I'm going to resolve this tension is I'm going to go back to my addiction. I'm going to gossip and complain to try to resolve my tension. I'm going to criticize and humiliate to try to resolve my tension. We won't say this, but we've been praying prayers. Lord, take this feeling away from me. You mean the way God wired you? You mean the way that he created you and knit you together in your innermost being? You want him to take those feelings away from you? I'm stop. We're saying things like, Lord, my life would be so much better if you would take that person away from me. Some of y'all have been praying prayers, hey, Lord, bless them with a new job so I never have to see them again. <laughs> I just want to highlight for us that there is some tension that we have and we need to address the tension. Because if we do not address the tension, it will lead to unresolved issues. Unresolved issues, listen, leads to unmanageable bitterness. And unmanageable bitterness leads to unexplainable anger. I'll say it again for you note takers, unresolved issues leads to unmanageable bitterness, and unmanageable bitterness leads to unexplainable anger. Every time they walk in the room, as soon as they walk in the room, your face just starts to shift. Your body just starts to shift. You ever notice how that happens? They walk into the room, you're like, look at her. Look at him. Man. Like, you don't even have to see the person. You can just hear about the person. You hear their name. James, man, I can't stand him. You just see a text come across your screen. Or, or, or you hear a voicemail or an email from that person. You're like, get him, Jesus. Get him. Do it, Lord. Do it. <laughs> see, our version of resolving the tension is giving people what they deserve, right? 
But thank God he doesn't give us what we deserve. Thank God Jesus doesn't play by our rules. See, this is what would happen if he did. They're sitting on this hill trying to resolve this tension, and Jesus would have easily said, okay, I'm the judge. I'm going to give everything. I'm going to make sure it's fair. Here we are. Tax collector, you've been stealing all of these people's money. And so what I want you to do is I want you to take all of that money, give it back to them, and I want you to give it back to them tenfold. And on top of that, once you're done with that, I'm going to put you in jail because you're a thief. And the crowd would have been saying, yeah, Jesus, get him. That's right. That, get him, Jesus. Then Jesus would have moved uh, over to someone else because he's a boss like that. He would have said, you Pharisees, you self-righteous hypocrites. Like, all you do is oppress these people with your rules and your laws. And so I'm going to make you worse than any slave. You're going to be under whatever a slave could be. I'm going to make sure that you feel oppressed. I'm going to strip you of your titles and everything else. And the crowd would have been like, that's right. That's fair, Jesus. Get him. Get him, Jesus. Get her, Jesus. You know what she said. You know what you did. And Jesus would have stopped them right in their tracks and said, you, you making all the noise. You, you got this issue with your heart. You've got this issue with your heart. And the problem with your heart is that you've allowed this issues to grow to, to bitterness. And this bitterness has turned to anger and your anger has turned to hate. And what's crazy is that if you were to have the right opportunity, this hate would lead you to murder because you've already done it in your relationship. You've already done it in your heart. And so Jesus says that if I'm going to give everyone what they deserve, then an eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, a life for a life, that means that you will be in the jail and not just in the jail, but you will be prepping yourself for execution because you deserve to die. But thank God that he doesn't give us what we deserve. Are you feeling that tension? He doesn't play by our rules, and I'm so grateful. He doesn't operate with our system. Jesus doesn't resolve the tension. Instead, like a boss, Jesus doesn't resolve the tension. He actually steps into it. All right, I got y'all. Let, let me help y'all. He says, we had a system that was broken, and so... When I have a broken system, I don't need another system to try to fix it. I need a person. What you need is a repairman. See, the system doesn't make sense. So we, we can have people show us all day long. We can watch YouTube videos. We can try to tinker and, and play with it. But what happens is we've been operating on a system, trying to do it our own way. And every time we try to mess with the system, we wind up messing it up even more. And so what we need is someone who is qualified at dealing with broken systems. We need someone who is qualified with dealing with insufficient funds. We need someone who is qualified with dealing with hurt, qualified with dealing with pain. We need a repairman, and his name is Jesus. We don't need another system. We need a person. I want to give you this really quick. I'm running out of time, but here it is. Here's some hope for you. Whenever God wants to change a system, <laughs> take notes on this. Whenever God wants to change a system, he steps into it with a big butt. Something like, what are you talking about? <laughs> I'm going to tell you what I'm talking about. Here it is. Paul says in Ephesians chapter 2, whenever God wants to change a system, he steps into it with a big butt. Here it is. All of us lived among them at one time. How many of us? All of us. That means that we're all accounted for here. Gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. We were operating by a broken system and we've been trying to resolve the tension. But here's what it says. Like the rest. See, see here's the tension right here. Some of us think that we're better than others. Well, I don't do what they do. I don't say what they say. I didn't treat her the way he, they treated me. I, like, we think we're better and Jesus says, no, no, Paul's even saying here, like the rest, we were all deserving of God's wrath. Deserving of what? Wrath. That means that you deserve to die. You and I deserve to be hated. We deserve to have the full judgment of God placed on us because we were living under broken systems. But here is God's big but. But you thought that that system worked. But you were hopeless. But... You've been operating in the system of doing relationships, but God steps in. Like, you, you keep trying to go back and forth with this relationships because you're insecure, but. <laughs> 
But God says, I need to change this system. Hold up for a second. Let me step into this. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, he's got a lot of it, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in our transgressions. It's by grace that you have been saved. Listen, I don't care how big your issue is. God has a bigger butt. Remember that. Take it take for what it's worth. So he stepped down and he puts on mercy so that we will know how to do it. We can't repair the system. We have no ability to. And, and this has been happening all throughout time. Moses had an encounter with God the same way. He was trying to resolve the tension. In Exodus 34, I don't have time to get there, but I want you to read that. I want you to kind of take a snapshot of it. But Moses is saying, God, I want to resolve some tension. Can you show me your glory? God says, well, I'm not going to do that because you can't handle my face. You're not going to be able to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover your eyes. I'm going to pass in front of you. And when I pass in front of you, all you're going to see is my back. What's connected to your back? Your butt. Just saying. So God says, I'm going to show you that the Lord, the Lord is compassionate and gracious. You had this system, but now I'm changing the game. You can't handle this. And see, here's the problem. You are trying to understand the system, but you need to be looking at a person. Hebrews 2 echoes this. It says, for this reason, he had to be made like them, fully human in every way, in order that he might become a merciful and high priest in service to God, that he might make atonement for the sins of the people. Here's what I want you to hear. Mercy is not something that we understand. It's someone that we experience. Get that in your soul. These folks were on the hill asking God to resolve the tension. Help us understand mercy. And what they were missing in the midst of all of their question is that mercy was standing right there in front of them. We get so caught up with all of our theological debates and everything else. And Jesus is saying, I'm right here in front of you. Jesus, the merciful, treated them better than they deserved from him. And just like these people... We've experienced mercy. Don't get me wrong. Like, just like Jesus, uh, just like these people on the hill, we experience mercy. But here's the problem. Sometimes we let our butts become bigger than God's. See, we feel the offense. We feel the hurt. We feel the tension. And automatically, we tend to forget what we've experienced. So when we forget what we experienced, we go back to what we understood. When I start feeling the tension, I go back to where I came from. Go ahead and say that again, and I'm going to show you what my family does. Go ahead and say that again, and I'm going to show you where I'm from, because you ain't, you ain't going to, I'm not going to allow you to see that I'm a punk in this relationship. Go ahead and say that again. Go ahead and neglect me again so I can go back to the hurt I felt. Go ahead and don't answer my phone call again so I can go back to my abandonment. Go ahead and put me in the tension again so I can go back to the system that I created. See, in the tension, we create systems to help us understand what you deserve and what they deserve, and we often forget what we've experienced. And I want you to know what you've experienced, what you and I have experienced. The reason that we're sitting here on this Sunday morning, the reason why you're watching online is because when we were in the greatest tension of our eternal life, we were operating by a system that was incapable of helping us. So God, who is rich in mercy, decided to step down and send his son named Jesus to die on the cross so that you and I could have a new experience. That's it. I don't know what else you need. This is it. And so what Jesus is showing us here is that forget all of the stuff that you're trying to figure out. Understand this equation. Here is the new equation. Jesus equals Mercy. Church, say that with me. Jesus equals mercy. Let's say it again. Jesus equals mercy. See, sometimes we get so caught up in our rights. Sometimes we get so caught up in our wrongs. Sometimes we get so caught up in our offenses. Sometimes we get so caught up in the injustices and our preferences and our tension that we forget the simple truth. Jesus equals mercy. And whenever I try to add something to his system, I wind up breaking the system. Jesus equals mercy. But what about Jesus equals mercy? But, but you didn't hear how they, Jesus equals mercy. But you didn't see how Jesus equals mercy. There you go with that Christian denial again. Now, nah, this is just true hope. Jesus equals 
mercy. Get that in your spirit, y'all. Like, we don't have to, I don't really need to say anything else. Jesus equals mercy. Many of us are standing in 2020 trying to resolve some tension, wondering, can we be done with this yet? And Jesus is saying, why don't you trust me in this? Like the same mercy that I showed you, why don't you show to them? I'm not saying that you need to get over it, but I'm saying you need to allow him to work it out in your life. See, see, we always start with them, and Jesus is saying, no, start with him. There's some of us that need to experience some healing right now. I'm going to let the band come out. But I want us to, to, to really feel this, is that we are so quick to point the finger. I didn't share this last night, but I'll share it really quick, and then we'll end off here. But last, uh, over the weekend, I was reading this, uh, this article of this man who was uh, facing the death penalty, and he was executed. And it threw me off because this man was facing the death penalty and was executed because he had made a really bad decision when he was 18 years old. And I'm thinking like, man, that was 20 years ago where he made this decision. And I'm like, how could we do this? How could we be talking about being pro-life but not care about this guy's life? And I started rationalizing all these things where he's a young black man and he's doing this. How come, how could we treat him that way? And what's crazy is I was feeling all of these emotions and so, so much sympathy and empathy for this brother. And then I read the following story about an older gentleman who was 56 years old. And he kind of, things got out of control and he took the life of his two-year-old. Oh, and instantly I went crazy. Oh, he, des- he deserves all of that. He, he actually deserves every bit of that. What, whatever he's going to get, he deserves it because he should have known better. You can't do that to children. You can't do that to these people. And when I was reading this story, I was sharing with my wife that my, my heart begins to break because, no, I haven't done what this guy did. I didn't do what the other guy did. But what I did sent Jesus to the cross. And he paid for it. What we've got to understand, church, is that mercy does have a cost. Jesus already paid for it. And what I want to leave you off with is this. How much longer are you going to ask them to pay for something that Jesus already paid for? Would you stand on your feet? I know I didn't give you guys, I had a bunch of slides or whatever. If you watch Saturday night, I I gave like some like practical one, two, three, four, five steps. But I just want us to sit in this for a minute. God is... Interested, yes, in us singing songs, and and he loves when we we give him glory and we give him praise. But we're making a shift right now. We're entering into a season as a church talking about consecration and what God wants to begin to prune in our lives. And I think a part of that pruning is going to happen in our relationships. See, what we've decided as pruning in our relationships is y'all get away from me. Let me move away from this person. But Jesus' idea in pruning in a relationship is blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. His idea of pruning is that you give them what they don't deserve from you. Yeah, that, that may mean for some of you, you got to have some accountability set up. You, you don't need to go back into a dumb situation. You don't need to go back into an abusive relationship. But you need to understand that God is trying to work something out in your heart. It's not just this physical thing that we get so wrapped up in. Yes, he wants to heal you physically, but there's some of us that we need to be healed emotionally. And when we show mercy, there is something that happens. In fact, Hebrews says that for the joy set before him, he endured the cross. The significance is that Jesus understood that showing mercy brings great freedom and joy. And so as we sing this song about the reckless love of God, I want you to understand his reckless love for you, that he invites you to experience, that he treated you in a way that you didn't deserve from him. I want to throw the ball in your court. Let's not just get caught up in the words and, and just the emotion of this, but let's get caught up in what Jesus is inviting us to do. How will you respond? Will you trust me in this? Let's pray together. Father, thank you so much for your faithfulness. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your challenge. Thank you for your correction. 
But most of all, God, we're grateful for your glory. We're grateful for your love. Man, never ending, always faithful always compassionate. We have so much to be grateful for, so much to hope for. God, as we invite our prayer partners to be here with us, as people are struggling with so many things in their life right now, would you give us new hope? Would you give us new joy? And would you allow your mercy to be new this morning? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for covering me, Jesus. When I was covered in sin, you covered me with your mercy. When I was covered in my mistakes, you covered me with your grace. So I give you praise, I give you honor. Worship, worship. So merciful. So beautiful, you loved me. Before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. You have been so, so good to me. Yes, you have. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. You have been so, so kind to me.
Can we just uh, take a second, just kind of open up our hands, just in a posture of receiving, just for a minute? I just want to pray. As we're worshiping, the Lord just kind of reminded me the, uh, the opportunity, but also the strength that we have to sometimes uh, surrender and submit to Him. Because in order to, to, in order to be merciful to other people, we have to be willing to use our power to forgive in the moment and our power to show them mercy when we feel like we can use our power to prove them wrong or to tell them what they need to do or to show them how much they hurt us. We want to lay that hand on them. But I just want the Lord in this moment as we have our hands open, I want the Lord just to kind of rain down just in this moment, just a, a, even a, I don't even know how to say it, but a greater sense of just his glory, his mercy, his goodness, just so we can feel what, what it would truly feel like if we were able to do what God would do for us and just show us even more and more of his mercy. So Father, I just, I know you do it every day, God, and your word says mercies are new every single morning, but God, as our hands are open, those in this room and those online, God, I pray that you would just rain down even a greater abundance of your mercy, of your grace. God, help us just to feel your love, God, your love that chases us down, your love that do does whatever is need to be done, will overcome any mountain, any walls, any darkness that we have in our lives. You show us mercy every day, God. But even now, I just pray you rain down mercy in this house. God, that you rain down mercy upon your sons and your daughters, men and women, God, those who feel close to you and those who feel far away. Help us to feel and know and sense your goodness, even right now. As we're instructed to live this out, God, we just need to even feel a greater sense of your presence of mercy. I thank you for mercy right now. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Thank you that it's following us, God. You're with us. And Lord, I pray that you would just, as we get ready to transition from here, that you remind us this week just how to be merciful. Every opportunity where we just want to get revenge or be combative, help us to choose mercy. And even when we miss it, when we make a mistake, help us to take the power you've given us, the strength you've given us, to step into mercy and to be merciful just like you are towards us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hey, before we leave, a couple quick things. Number one, if this is your first time here, you know, we, even with COVID and, and uh, we look around the room, it doesn't look too packed, but we still get a lot of new faces. And if, if you uh, are here for your first time, we want to say welcome. And uh, we normally don't do this, but church, can we give people a round of applause just for tuning in online for the first time and just being here? Kind of feels churchy to do it, but why not, you know? We want you to feel welcome. And, uh, and we just ask that as you, you head on out in the back for you, there's these connect cards uh, in the seat pocket in front of you or actually in the... Uh, the offering box out there. Fill that out, drop it in there. We want to give you a gift just saying, hey, thanks for hanging out with us, visiting us for the first time. Uh, and just, you know, chat with you, answer any questions you have. People who are wearing these home team lanyards, you can talk to them. And that'd be a big thing too. And also we have an event called Freedom 101 coming up, uh, which is next Sunday, immediately following our Sunday morning service. It's going to be at 11 a.m. I think we have a slide for our announcements. And so that's going to be uh, Freedom 101, the middle announcement, December 20th, 11 a.m. You can sign up for that. And uh, we'd love to have you there to hang out with some of our pastors and, and our staff just to answer some questions, get a chance to learn more about what Freedom Life is doing. And then the, the bottom announcement, too, a lot of people have been wanting to know what we're going to be doing for Christmas Eve. Well, we're doing something really cool this year, and um, we're going to be actually filming and, and broadcasting a Christmas Eve service. And so we're actually in the midst of, of doing that right now. It's pretty cool. But what we're going to do is we're doing a family-style service. And so the way it's going to work is starting noon on Christmas Eve, we're going to be broadcasting every hour on the hour our Christmas Eve service. So noon Christmas Eve at flconline.org. You can watch that. It's going to go all the way through Christmas Day until midnight Christmas Day. So you have an opportunity if you're traveling for Christmas and you want to get somewhere and you want to watch this as a family, uh, it'll be a, a pretty condensed service because, you know, attention spans right now are like, you know, let's be honest, okay? So uh, so it'll be great to be able to do that together as a family. So, uh, so definitely tune in for that and check that out for Christmas Eve. And then last but not least, we've been talking about Convoy of Hope. And as a church, we're a generous church. And Freedom Life Church said amen. Right? We're a generous church. And so this is not something to 
pull your arm or pull your leg or anything like that. But every year we say, hey, we're going to be generous. We're going to give over and above. And we partner with one of our global partners, Convoy Hope. And what I want to do is show you a quick video because we've been talking about it. I want you to see what just your giving or your dedication to, you know, generosity actually looks like. So take a seat for a quick second and then we're going to dismiss here in a moment. I want you to watch this video of Convoy Hope. And I'll come back up and share some more information about it. So check this out. In Psalms 1, 13, 7, God says He lifts the poor from the dust and the needy from the garbage pile. That's what the scripture says. All that the children know here is garbage. Almost everyone in this community works in the trash dump, including the kids. It's like a time machine. They walk in and become adults. They get hurt a lot by knives, mirrors, and aluminum. Malnutrition and violence are the norm there, and most kids have never gone to school before. Four years ago, I helped start this school right across from the Citadel. This is the front lines of the battle. Until 2018, we didn't have any food at school. We started with zero. We even had a child passed out in class because she hadn't had anything to eat in more than 24 hours. It was very hard for us because kids were always hungry. I went looking for someone who could help, and I found Convoy of Hope. Now, we feed the kids every day. Because they have eaten, they are coming alive and learning more. For them to know that food is here, it gives them a sense of security that they lack in the rest of their life. Every child here is a treasure. Because of the food that Comboy gives, combined with the education we're providing, the kids can keep dreaming. And if we just give them one chance, we can prove that they are valuable and that they could do something rather than just stay in poverty. God is doing something great here, and His promises are coming true. Awesome. So hey, listen, you see that video, you hear the testimonies about it. So what's all the info on it, if you're curious? So when you leave, you can go out there in the foyer, you actually grab uh, one of these pamphlets right here if you want to, and it gives you more information about Convoy Hope. So what we're doing is we're saying, hey, during this whole holiday season, we're gonna partner with one of our global partners and we're gonna you know, jump on this campaign where it's one day to feed the world. So basically what you're gonna do is grab on these things here and you pick a day. Pick a day where you're gonna donate that day's wages uh, to Convoy Hope, or if you're like, hey, I don't know, I can do that, whatever you give. Here's the beauty, I just found this out yesterday. $10 to Convoy Hope, and everything you give is going directly to them. $10 feeds a child for an entire month. An entire month in their school-based eating program. That's, for not, I think 20 bucks feeds two kids for an entire month. So I want, I'm just encouraging you, take this with you, take the envelope, and you'll have a little sticker uh, within the envelope. And if you're watching online, you can download a graphic for Zoom, or if you're working from home and you're doing a lot of Zoom meetings, you can download a graphic to put on your Zoom background. You're saying, on this day, I'm choosing to dedicate my wages to give to Convoy of Hope. And uh, you can put it in there, you can give online, put it in your envelope, and again, 100% of it goes directly to them. And you may be asking, why are we doing this? What do we get out of it? Nothing. We get nothing out of it besides the fact of knowing that we're helping some incredible kids get some food, making an impact in the world. So why are we doing it? Because we can and because we should and because we're a generous church. Amen. So take some time to pray about it. See what the Lord will tell you to give. Uh, take some information. You want more about that or come ask somebody a question who has one of these layers on. We'd love to help you. All right, let's all stand to our feet real quick. And we'll go ahead and dismiss. And let's pray right now, one last prayer. Father, thank you for this time today. Thank you that you called us to be merciful, but thank you that we can expect new mercies every morning. And I pray and I speak life over everybody in this room and watching online that this week we will experience your mercy and your blessings like never before. I pray and I prophesy and speak a turnaround happening this week that we will sense just a greater amount of your goodness and your mercy every single day. And people will sense the character of Christ in each one of us. We thank you, we declare it, and we love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, somebody shout amen. God bless you guys. Hey, we'll see you next week.